Hey guys, it's Kylie with North 40 Outfitters. Today we are on the High Line of Montana. We are up near Chester, hanging out with the Fritz family. The Fritzes have been ranching up here for several generations. So I'm just about ready to go meet with the ranch boss. And uh, rumor has it that he can be a little bit hard to talk to. He can be a little bit intense and um, he likes to tell you kind of how things go. Oh, I'm the shoe. I said, get out of the shoe. Oh, get out of the shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. How many cows do you have? Uh, always forget. Close to the So, how many? How many are yours? Do you have your own herd? Yeah. How many? Uh, one. One. Who does who does most of the work around here? <laughs> well, but who's in charge, though? The ranch boss is pretty determined. Yeah. He's four years old that he's going to run the place. Yeah, so. Luke came out a 40-year-old farmer. When he was born, he's so intense and he's so passionate about agriculture. They'd be the seventh generation on the place. My name is Jake Fritz. We're up here in Chester, Montana. We're on the original homestead. Uh, it was homesteaded in 1909. I am the sixth generation on the place. We farm and ranch. I run half the cows. Dad runs the other half. Um, part of mine are share cows and the other half are owned. Um, we've been calving for just about a month now. Um, we're calving out. 470 head this year. Um, it's most we've ever had. Going really good. Um, we've had five sets of twins so far. Um, weather turned really good now. Our only factor is wind and some ice. pizza pen because it's the shape of a pizza. Anyway, we're in three stages. We have a cow that just calved. We have a cow who's got toes and nose coming out. And we have a calf who's thrown her first water bag and should in the next hour have her calf. That cow was having a really hard time having her calf and so we had to take her in the barn to pull her. But she had already claimed another calf. So she would not leave this other calf. So Jake had to use twine and drag the calf in to kind of lure the mama cow in so he can help that mom have her calf. We had a calf today. The cow kept claiming other calves and it prolonged her birth, prolonged her labor. The calf started drying out. Even though it was coming right and it was a good size, she, she wouldn't lay down and push. So we brought her in and uh, helped that calf out and it was an easy pull. It was just it was starting to dry out. So we wanted to get it out and uh, live calves, good thing. December of 2012, I decided to come back to the ranch. After six months of vocational ed, uh, bought 115 cows, worked alongside dad for the farming, worked for him for farming, and then uh, had a herd of our own started. Uh, we started ran farming in 18. The farmland is um, all Fritz land, and so back several generations, when it got split, it was like, okay, one brother took one, the next took yeah, the other. Yeah, it was checkerboarded, and so yeah. now we've got it all together. Yeah, it's just back together one piece. my dad and I. Mm -hmm. that, that barn is a moist, hot box that is perfect for growing disease. And so if you don't keep fresh bedding in it and keep it limed down, then you can get a lot of sick calves through a barn. So if we, if we can at all and it's nice enough, we'll, we'll keep them out. 
outside. Roughly 200 cows in here right now. And they're all heavy enough they could cow here within the next week. I'm here at the calving barn of the Fritzes and um, just went out with Jake. He's he's on duty until about midnight and he um, drug a calf in and he's feeding some of the feeding them some hay. So um, this is where they hang out. Like the trick is just getting them through the open gate. <laughs> make it their idea. Come on. All right, guys, so it's just about two o'clock in the morning. Um, they switched shifts, so Dina's out here. Since Jake came on, they've had one cow calve out, and um, they brought some more into the barn. Everything's showing yet. We have lived out here, well, Jim's lived out here his entire life, so, um, and then we were married in 92. So we've been or living out here since then. Well, with Jake, he was born a 30-year-old farmer, so I knew that was happening. <laughs> but um, it is hard. Uh, you have to try and balance family and business at the same time. And with farming, it's always business. Then there's always family, so you're involved in both of them. Um, it was. It's hard for the next generation to come up and bring their own ideas and their own and build themselves while still working with dad and grandpa. Um, at one time we had four generations still going on this wow. place. And so um, it's trying to balance the how we did it then and how we do it now type of thing. So, um, so that's been interesting. And that's a big challenge for Jake too, is how do I keep growing and changing and still respecting the roots of this place too. Got a steer calf. Do you think Luke was also born a 30 year old? Yes, yes. He is a twin to Jake. And anyone who visits with him will know that because he can sit and discuss farming and ranching with you for a long time. And he knows exactly what's going on and will tell us what's going on all the time, too. So far, there's a lot of Fritz boys. So that has not been a problem. <laughs> but it never hurt for a girl to come up and take over either because you know, we know who does the real work anyway. So. So we made it through the night, nothing too crazy happened. Most of the excitement was yesterday afternoon. We are just about ready to head out and feed some cows. There's about a 35 mile an hour wind right now. So not the funnest thing to be doing on a day like today. You can hear the wind just howling outside. So I wanted to show you guys something this morning. Um, I was born and raised on the High Line and pretty used to nasty winds. It's, we get wind most days and uh, with the lack of moisture and snow, this topsoil is just blowing through the air. You can see it miles and miles of just dirt. Um, it's tough to see and it it's hard for the farmers and ranchers. It's definitely a little discouraging to to watch your topsoil blown away. Some of these guys are gonna have to look at reseeding in the spring because, I mean, it's gone. I think farming and ranching is so romanticized. I think the idea of it is so, it's something that people look at and think like, it's just wonderful, but there also are some, a lot of hardships, financial hardships, like us almost having to leave because we couldn't afford it. and. You know, always hoping that the calf prices go up the next year, or the wheat market, and um, the time. Also, it's very, it's very, very hard. Jake wakes up every day just going outside to feed the world. Show me if it's a steer calf, which year? 
Yep, and if it's a heifer calf, which year? Good job. I hope that they come back. Um, I, I'm not gonna push it. It's a big part of why we do what we do is because of just the slight chance of them coming home and doing the same thing too for possibly the eighth generation. Uh, it's, it's a good way of life, being your own boss.